Evening, family. How y'all doing? All right. All right. Pastor's evening, on, so Pastor. Pastor came on right on time, so we're going to yes. get started right on time. So, Pastor, we were just about to kick off. Okay. Is there anything you want to uh, say to the group before we get started? Yeah, I do. So, uh, Reverend McBee, you on, right? Can you hear me? You're on mute if you're talking. Yes, McBee, I'm here. Yeah, we got some info that I want to share uh, with the church um, around housing. Uh, Reverend B, can you just quickly share that information and maybe uh, during the conversation tonight, um, just drop the information in the, uh, what do you call it, the chat? Okay, I will. Uh, we got some information about opportunities for um, housing support, both in Fairfax County and in Prince William County. Fairfax County, um, there is supposed to be a, um, like a housing lottery where those who qualify people can um, sign up and they will pick a certain number of people to provide a subsidy for rent. Right. Um, and so for the thing to note is that the, the Fairfax County, let me open up my text so I tell you correctly, the um, Fairfax County um, window of opportunity is actually for a one week um it is between october 21st to 27 but the prince william is one day mm -hmm. october 29th yeah so we want to make sure that we share that information the information will also be in the we the weekly you know information update that goes out from the office well it will be in there as well or if somebody don't remember anything else send an email to missions and we will be glad to, you know, uh, uh, provide um, information, share information that you can share with others, share with anybody who could use it. Uh, who want to just get the word out. Beautiful. That's it. Thank you. That's awesome. all I got. Uh, praying for anyone who's lost a loved one. I know a few folks um, are, are grieving right now. And so our hearts and, minds and thoughts go out to those those folks as well uh, all of our family members yeah thank you pastor um so welcome everybody this is the start of a new bible study series we are calling generosity and stewardship reflecting god's heart and we are so honored and so privileged to have Leading off today, Sister Jeanette Bean. Uh, she is an accomplished teacher. She is my mentor and professor. Uh, and as we embark on this new study series, we will start with scripture and prayer, and then we will turn it over smartly to Deaconess Bean, if that's okay with everybody. So the scripture is going to come out of 2 Corinthians 8th chapter. We'll be reading uh, 8 through 15, I believe. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses eight through 15. And it reads as thus. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies the seed to the sower and the bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through, your, through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come to this point in the evening. We thank you for protecting us from danger, seen, unseen. And now, Lord, we ask you 
to come into our midst in your Holy Spirit. Help us to focus on your word and help us, help us to embed it in our hearts, that it may change our behavior, that it will change our viewpoint, that will impassion us to do your will in your way. God, we ask you to be with our teacher this evening. Give her strength and confidence from on high. We know that she is prepared. God, give her everything she needs to em embody and to imbue and to impart all that she needs to during this Bible study. God, we ask you to bless our pastor in a special way, bless his family, bless all those within the sound of my voice, all those who are dialed in. God, we ask you to watch over the sick and infirm and those who are grieving, God. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer. Amen. Deacon Bean, over to you. Thank you so much, my brother Farmer. So glad to see everybody. Um, glad to be back before you tonight. And I'm so glad to see everyone on tonight. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our 2024 Fall Bible Study Series. We're glad to offer this series entitled um, Generosity and Stewardship. Let me show my <clears throat> slide here for a second. Hold on one quick second. Hopefully everyone can see that. Generosity and stewardship reflecting God's heart. This Bible study series goes hand in hand as an extension of our belief campaign. It's a heart thing. Uh, the Wednesday Bible study teachers are serving under the leadership and vision of Pastor Wilkins, who's leading us through this faith journey. We're excited to share what God has uh, given to us to share with you. And, and you know, we're realizing that it's, it's God that's charting our path. And it's an awesome journey. And we are expecting great things. I'll be introducing the series tonight and we'll be giving you an idea as to what's to come. This Bible study series Generosity and Stewardship Reflecting God's Heart. It's an 11 week series. During this series, we'll have conversations about various topics each of the 11 weeks, and they're all related to Jesus's teaching uh, on generosity and stewardship from the Old and the New Testament. Our class duration will be one hour. We'll start promptly at 7 p.m. And we'll have you out of class by no later than 8 p.m., so one hour. You don't need to purchase a book this time, um, but we do ask that you um, have your Bibles handy because we'll be reading lots of scripture references. Our time together will be interactive. Well, the classes are designed to be um, those I, that focus I just on can't sharing. Think about I am. I'm sorry. Use my. Of those, um, our classes are designed to be focused on sharing and discussions and even testimonials. So get ready. We want to create an atmosphere that's relaxed, a relaxed space where you feel uh, welcome and, and able to open in conversation and conversation will flow freely and everyone feels equally free to contribute. And since we're in this Zoom environment, our virtual environment, we're asking all those that can to please turn on your Zoom video cameras for each session. It helps our communication when we're trying to talk with each other. It's, it's, it's very difficult to talk to a, a black box with a name printed in it. So if you would turn on your videos, we would greatly appreciate that. Tonight, I'll discuss the nature of God's generosity. I'll mention a couple of slides tonight that, that will be common for each of the Bible study sessions. So you may want to take a picture of them and I'll let you know when we get to that point. God's generosity. 
You know, this is not a topic that I need to teach anyone because everybody in this Zoom room is familiar with the generosity of God. But what I hope to accomplish is an awakening. I want to see, uh, or at least I want to raise the level of awareness. I want to celebrate our generosity that God has given us. So we hope that you leave each session with something that causes you to reflect later on. Let's all pray and believe that the Holy Spirit will instruct us in applying his truths as we share and discuss together each Wednesday evening. This next chart, this is one that you will probably see uh, in all the Bible study sessions. God has spoken to Pastor Wilkins and Pastor Wilkins has written the vision for MOBC. And we're all familiar pr pretty much with this um, belief campaign uh, since we've been talking about it for uh, several Sundays. But if we have someone online that's not familiar with it, just speak up and we'll be happy to share our endeavors with you. You see the chart here, it has a, a heart in the center of the page. As we continue to learn more about God, he transforms our hearts. And as a result of that transformation, we grow in faith. And our faith is what moves us into action. We believe that the actions we will take will enable us to um, uh, realize divine resources to meet human needs. That's what Pastor Johnson, Pastor Wilkins says, right? So it's a heart thing. Generosity is a heart thing. So our belief is anchored in the scripture, uh, Mark 9, 23, which says that all things are possible through Jesus Christ. The passages or the, the phrases that are stemming from the heart are our abbreviated, abbreviated believe, believe statements. We believe that faith unlocks new possibilities. We believe we will have purposeful, strategic actions and collective efforts for our church and our endeavors. We believe through unity, sacrifice, and purpose, we will build a stronger foundation for future generations. We believe that we will strive for excellence. Excellence reflects our commitment to honoring God. And lastly, we believe that we will strive through faith. God is abundantly providing above all that we can even ask, think, or imagine. So why do we believe these things? Why do we believe these things to be true? Well, it's because God has demonstrated and God has proven to be a, a prayer answering God. I think you'll agree with that. So he's a generous God, and we celebrate that fact. So open up your, your audio and, and tell me, uh, someone or several people, what is a very general or simple definition for the word generosity? Anybody? Freely giving. Freely giving. I like that. Giving without expectations. Giving without expectations. Being generous. Giving without expecting to get something back. Not that, pre, uh, that what is it, quid pro quo? I'm going to give you something and I'm going to get something in return. Without expectations. Exactly. I like that as well. So, so why is God generous? Why is God so generous? Because he is, I am who I am. You know what I'm going to be saying. <laughs> because, because he told that. us, I am who I am. Because I'll be whatever you want me to be. Of all. Because right. he loves us. Yeah. Because he loves us. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? He wants the best for us. He wants the best for us. Amen. There's a couple of things in the chat, Sister Bean. Um, he loves us. He cares about us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All so true. 
also true. God is a definition of generosity. Yeah. He loves us. He cares for us. God is filled with unfailing love and a faithfulness. He's a God of compassion, a God of mercy, and we celebrate that. So what scriptures come to mind when you think about God's generosity? Does any, any scripture just jump out to you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I knew that one would come first. Yes, yes. That he loved us so much that he gave. He's generous. He gave. Any others? He said that he would never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. Forsake us. Yes, yes, yes. That's a promise that he's given us. A generous promise. Never leave you. Never forsake us. Any others? God demonstrated his love for us while we were still sinners. You know, he died for us while we were still sinners. All great answers. Thank you so much. Let's move on to this next chart. I'd like for you to reflect on these pictures and share what comes to mind when you look at these pictures. For me, the open hand means you have to open your hand in order to give. If you close your hand, you're selfish. Okay, all right. An open-handed approach to give, okay. So, so you're looking at this like this is your hand? I think that was Sister Carol. Was that Sister Carol's voice I heard? Yes. Okay. So you're looking at this like this is your hand. Okay. All right. Any others? I see, when you see the hands, I see the light. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, you know, come into me. When I see the hand reaching down for all the hands, it's like no one's left behind. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. He's pouring out to everyone yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. It's okay. The open hand with the open hand with the cross there, that means that God has given us freely. He's given us freedom? No, it's freely given. He's freely given. Freely, she said freely. Okay, he's free. Free get freely giving. Okay. When I was young, my mother used to have a saying, and it was a tight fist, nothing can get in and nothing can get out. So to see the hands open, it reminds me of how she taught us as children how to give. Mm hmm. Yeah. Give with an open hand. That's a precious thought that your mother has given you. Yes. Yes. God's hand is open to us. He lavishes his love on us with an open hand. He gives to us all. The whole world is in his hands. We rely on love that God gives us. We rely on that. God is love. Actually, I look at this as God's outrageous generosity. He's outrageous in his giving. He's extreme in his giving. He's radical in his giving. First John 4 and 16 states it like this. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So I'd like for you to listen to the scriptures. Um, as you meditate on these scriptures, think about God's outrageous generosity. Psalm 36, five through seven. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. 
your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk, whose walk is blameless. Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Psalm 145, verses 16 through 18. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sherry. That's right. The entire Bible is the story of God's outrageous generosity. Generosity is at the heart of God's story. If you think about creation, Creation was a supreme act of generosity. You think about it, the sun, the moon, the stars, water, air, day, night, humanity, animals. The heavens themselves declare, declare God's glory and proclaim the works of his hands. And even further, our inheritance as daughters and sons of the most high God is just amazing. His enduring love, and his gift of eternal life speaks volumes. Everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God. We can't even explain the extent of his generosity. And that is something to celebrate. If you would please look at this next set of pictures. Tell me what you see here. What, what resonates with you? in regards to God's generosity. And what do the pictures speak to you? Deacon has been one of the earlier comments on the hands uh, that she showed earlier was that it showed the hands of generations and. And what I see here is the hand of family and love. Mm, okay. In God chat, showing got, his love. In the chat, to I've the got family. love as well, unending love. God reaches, God's love reaches all people. Beautiful, beautiful. So true, so true. Thank you for that. Speaking as being, um, that picture with all the hands to me looks like they all recognize a single source. Hmm. They all recognize a single source. Okay, because they're all gathered and they're pointing toward the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I like that. It's really amazing how people see different things. It is so interesting. Who else, any other comments? What about the hands at the top? Are the hearts coming into the hand or going out of the hand? It's coming from into the hand. The single you source think they're coming, coming into the hand? Yes, the single source is coming from God. It's 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 emanated. It's, it's providing His love to us, and it's up to us to to capture it, so to speak. Okay, okay. So, what is our response to God? We are to love, we are to receive it and love back. Okay, all right. We're to reciprocate, aren't we? Sometimes you see the hearts going into the hand and sometimes they're leaving the hand. So we give and we receive, amen. When we understand God's generosity toward us, the Holy Spirit transforms our hearts 
And we respond to God's grace by being generous in return. Being generous is one way that we can demonstrate our desire to be part of God's kingdom work. He has purified and transformed our hearts. We respond to his love with trust and faith in things that might seem impossible. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to listen and meditate on these scriptures. 1 John 3, verse 1, clause A. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 1 John 4, 11 and 12. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Luke 10, verse 27. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Hebrews 10, 22 through 24. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sherry. God has proven and he's woven generosity into our DNA. He freely gave to humanity, even when he knew that we would abuse his gifts. God's plan is for us to reflect his generosity with an open hand, open to receive, and open to give. His generosity changes our way of thinking that causes us to, us to seek his purposes. God wants us to live such that our story and his story would be the same. In other words, we should reflect generosity to others. God wants us to intentionally move from gratitude to a spirit of generosity. Each of us should ask ourselves the question, how do we live or how do I live? How do I live out the story of generosity? You need to think about that. All right, this next thing, there's a question in the chat. Sure. Says, what does the picture with the heart and many hands mean? This one down here. I like the explanation. Well, it can mean anything to, to, to you as you as you um, as you look at it and interpret it for yourself. But I like the explanation that the per person said. It's many hands serving together, and it's all pointing toward the center. No, the one beside that with the three, uh, the yeah, the one with the oh, heart. this one. Yeah. Okay. And I see three hands here. I I see three different sets of hands with the heart in the middle. So it's like we, we, we giving, we're giving in unison. That's how I interpret it. I interpret so the heart as it's precious. Say it again, please, I'm sorry. Holding the heart as it's precious, it's delicate. Mm, that's another way to look at it, yes, yes. Um, Dick Nesbin. The scripture also says that we should guard our heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. So the three hands, or probably four hands here, um, you know, they're also guiding the heart as a very precious thing. We all know that our heart sometimes can be very fragile, you know, so even as we're giving, um, it's also something that we need to 
hold so dearly and protect it and all of that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I like that explanation. Um, yes, guarding the heart, holding it as it's a, it's a, it's something very precious. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, the other thing that comes to my mind, I see the first hand holding the heart, but then you have the other hands under the first hand helping to hold it up because mm -hmm. it's in order the work of us, you know, um, loving on each other and, and, and caring with the heart of God takes all of us. And oftentimes it's not one person it's us supporting each other in whatever God has placed in our hands. Um, I think of what God places in our hands. And sometimes that work or that, that the way he calls us to love, we cannot do it by ourselves, but we need mm -hmm. others to come alongside and put their hands under for, so that together we can extend the love of God to who, whomever he asks us to extend it to. Beautiful. I Beautiful. look at it as you have to say that love conquers all. Mm hmm mm hmm Great explanations. Great insight. I love both of those answers. Love so Sabine, comes out. Sure. You do yes. have in the chat also, it can also mean the heart knitted into one, one big family. Hmm. Okay. Beautiful. See, I knew that we all have different interpretations and they're all great answers. Thank you so much for participating in that exercise. I look at it, um, are you there? Can you hear me? Sure, go right okay. ahead. I look at it as once we give our heart to Christ, he welcomes us as we are. And I think those hands are stretched out as our welcome mm -hmm. to salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He welcomes us as we are. Yes. We don't have to have any pretense when we come before him, correct? That's right. No. Thank you so much for your answers and for your insight. All right, so we're gonna do an exercise here. We'll create a word cloud. Everyone has a chance to build it. This is your opportunity to do your testimonials. Your testimonial will be in, in writing uh, for this exercise. You're, you're to provide a word that speaks to God's generosity to you. Whatever that is, rest, peace, love, whatever that is. What have you gained from God's generosity? And uh, Sister Gabby's going to put a link in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing in just a second. And um, you, she's, you can click on the link or, or click on or, or access the QR code. Um, or you can go to Google and type menti.com. And once you get there, you can put it in the code as you see it here, 1832-8709. But if you click on the link, you don't have to do all that. Those that are on the phone that can't do that, you can just shout your word out. And then we have some, some people that have volunteered to put your word into the word cloud, cloud for you. All right? So you got your assignment, one word, one word that speaks to God's generosity toward you. I'm going to stop sharing. And even if you see your word up there, go ahead and put it in anyway. That allows us to see all the common blessings that God has blessed more than one person with. Peace. Love, peace, grace. I see a lot of words coming in the chat. Can someone put those in, please? I got them, Sister Bing. Okay. Sanity. Oh, I like that one overflowing, everlasting, deliverance, clarity, forgiveness, abundance, unending love, 
faithfulness is in the chat. God's grace, deliverance, abundance, empathy. That's a good one. Helping. Mercy. Mercy. Peace. Words are coming into the chat box. We're capturing them. Long suffering. Oh my goodness, yes, Lord. Outpouring, compassion, salvation. Understanding, consistency. I have one for myself, put in personal. Helping. His great love, kindness, fairly. The cloud is still growing. Deliverance. More than enough. Joy, love. Jesus, okay. Protection. You see another grace in the chat box. Everlasting, strength, abundance. Unconditional, compassionate. Everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. <laughs> unending love promise looks like kindness Jesus peace unending love those are those are um have been put in by more than one person so it's big on our word cloud patience So Lily says comfort. Caring, clarity. Restoration. Courage. Renewal. These are some great words. Support. Beautiful, beautiful. Kindness. Deliverance, everlasting. We set that one, abundance. Still growing. Always present. Promise in the chat box. All right. All right. That's a great exercise. And I'm so glad that we can verbalize and actually everyone can testify as to how God has been so generous, so generous to us. 
And if you think about it, all these are free gifts. Free gifts that God has given to us. Through the abundance of God's grace, he has generously lavished us with all these beautiful, wonderful gifts. And here's the deal about all these gifts is that we are accountable for managing all that God has entrusted to us. We're responsible, we're accountable. Our last study, Experiencing God, we learned that God is always at work and he invites us to join in wherever he's already working. So these gifts, this is what we are offering to others as he gives to us. So how do we go about doing that? We offer our gifts to glorify God and also to bless others. God does not measure our giving by the size of our gifts. He measures our giving by how much we give out of what we have. And God is moved by how much sacrifice is involved in our giving. So we thank him for giving us such wonderful gifts and we're able to reciprocate and return the gifts to others. We celebrate that. All right, let's share my screen again. And um, let's see. All right, our Believe campaign invites us to join in where God is working and believe it, MOBC is being moved by the hand of God. Generosity is the spirit with which we respond to God's call. Our response is not just limited to our finances, which is our treasures. We're also to offer our time, our temple, our talents, our testimony as well, and our treasure. I call these gifts our five T's. God has given these five T's to all people on this earth. Although we have been given them in different degrees and different ways, what matters is how we choose to use them. First Peter four and 10 tells us, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So you see here, we have a tree. And some of you may know that I, I am fascinated with trees. One of my hobbies is to sculpt various shapes of trees out of copper wire and mount them on some type of surface. I love doing that. In the Bible, trees are often used to illust illustrate stories and parables. Trees represent abundant life, growth, fertility, and even strength. Genesis begins with referring to two trees, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And then Revelation ends by referring to the eternal tree of life. We also know that Christ paid the price for our sins on the tree of Calvary. We've read stories in the Bible about cedar trees, all different kinds of trees, cedar trees, myrtle trees, juniper trees, sycamore trees, fir trees, olive trees, broom trees, and many others. So I've chosen to explain our gifts or our five T's according to the characteristics of our generosity tree, starting from the bottom up. This is one other chart that you'll see in each one of our presentations. So you might wanna take a picture to, of it because you'll have to refer back to it with some other topic. So let's start with the explanation. Let's start with the roots of the tree. It takes time for a tree to develop its roots. And time is depicted as the roots of the tree. In relation to time, we all have the same amount of hours, minutes, and seconds per day. But we use our time in differing ways. We see God inviting us to dig deep 
to utilize our time for kingdom work and to build relationships. He encourages us to spend time in prayer and be deeply rooted, not just surface roots like an evergreen tree. He desires, his desire for us is to be entrenched, stable, reaching out far, deep, and wide to accomplish his work that he has prepared for us. Romans 12, 12 through 13 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Take the time to practice hospitality. The temple. The temple is the tree trunk, the trunk of the tree. The trunk must be strong so that it can stand against any strong or high wind. It's the same as our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and not our own. So we must nourish our bodies by keeping the proper rest and nutrients and exercise to withstand the tasks ahead of us. We must do the proper things to take care of ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. Let's move to the talents. The talents are depicted as the tree branches. Just as the tree branches are pointing upward and outstretched, we lift our hands and praise God for all the skills and the talents and the abilities that he's given us. MOBC has some really extremely talented members and we offer our talents to serve others as faithful stewards. As Pastor Wilkins always says, it's all in the house. And it is. First Peter 4.10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Let's move to the testimony, the fourth T. Our testimony is demonstrated by the leaves on the tree. They do not wither and they are a sign of prosperity. When we experience God's generosity, we can't keep it to ourselves. Just as the leaves blow in the wind, we can't wait to share our testimonies with others. Deuteronomy 6 and 7 tells us to talk about the goodness of God. When we sit at home, when we walk along the road, when we lie down and when we get up. You know, and oftentimes our testimonies uplift and inspire others. I recall when Sister uh, Word told us about her brother uh, in one of our last classes. That was inspirational to me. And lastly, let's talk about our treasures. Our treasure is symbol symbolized by the fruit on our tree. Isaiah 45 and three, God says to his anointed, I will give you hidden treasures Riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord who summons you by name. Well, God has summoned MOBC to believe. We believe that God will use the gifts he's given to move us to financial freedom. As believers, we will bear the fruit of our labors. Psalms 1 and 3. Psalms 1 and 3 says that the person that delights in what God has so generously given will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Amen. Okay, after we've talked about the tree, I want to leave you with one reflection. And here's the question. Think about it at home in your quiet time. How responsible am I with the gifts that God has entrusted to me to handle for him? 
I thought about this question really hard and it meant something totally different or it had greater emphasis when I added the for him on there. We can do things all the time, but when we're talking about working for the Lord, he's talking about having us responsible and we're accountable with the gifts that he's entrusted to us. So think about those five T's and think about how we handle and how we're responsible for handling the gifts that he's entrusted us to handle for him. All right. That's the end of the first segment of generosity. On next Wednesday, this is a two-part series on generosity for this particular session. On next Wednesday, we'll talk about God's generosity as shown in the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. So I ask that you read Luke 15, 1 through 2, and also 11 through 32, so that we'll be prepared for our discussion together next week. So we're we're giving home, we're not giving homework, we're giving you hard work. So if you please read that and, and we'll be ready for our discussion for next week. And we'll apply what we talked about tonight to the parable of the prodigal son when we talk next week. All right. So also what I'd like for you to do is take a look at the questions. These are a lot of questions. So we'll talk about this. This is we'll spend the whole session next week talking about the prodigal son and 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 really unpacking these questions and what it actually means as far as being generous. So if you want to take a picture so that you can get ready for next week, uh, we'll start out discussing and unpacking these, providing the answers and insight to the parable of the lost son. I'll give you a moment to take your pictures. Everybody got the camera out? Everybody's done? Anybody not done? <laughs> All right. Sister Williams, are you done? Or is that a hand to show me that you're not done? Or you have a question? No, I had to go get my phone. First I had to find my phone. Now I gotta figure out how to use it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you a text too, if you can't get it. Oh, please do. I will do that. Bless <laughs> you, thank to. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Everybody got the picture? Okay. If anybody doesn't have it, just let me know. All right. That's the end of the first segment of uh, week one, generosity. Uh, and we're going to bring any comments or questions, first of all. Great job, right. Deacon is being. Sure. That's a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I love the generosity tree. <laughs> I know. I love trees in general, but that generosity, that generosity tree spoke to me. It really yes. does. Yeah, it really does. All right, Pastor Wilkins, we're going to spotlight you. Lord, I don't know how I can follow all of that good news. Let, let me just, uh, let me just pause real quick. Uh, show me the gallery because I need folk to come off the of camera and and just help me celebrate uh, Deaconess Bean for a phenomenal job um, presenting with the gift of teaching. She is such a mighty and valuable gift to the body of Christ, and we're grateful for her continued um, thought leadership and service to our community. And she does it without sweating, <laughs> does it 
with with just pure fall, flawless execution that we're just we're just so no great. you didn't see me today you didn't see me <laughs> earlier today <laughs> so grateful so grateful uh for for your uh, wonderful imagery and all of the pictures um to reverend mcbee's point i thought the tree was just telling uh in so many ways of the imagery of what we should be portraying to society. Yeah. And my question is, are we dead trees? Mm -hmm. Or are we trees that are alive? Because mm -hmm. if we are trees that are alive, our roots represent deep and unwavering connection to God. Mm -hmm. Our trunks symbolize symbolizes the core of our character. The branches reflect the outward growth of our life in Christianity. The leaves testify of God, of our witness for Christ and the fruit. Y'all know the fruit, Galatians 5, 22 through 23 become the evidence. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. I'm grateful to serve a tree planting church. <laughs> it's clear about cultivating um, through discipleship. And I think I'll just say this. We have a unique and special opportunity in the work of Christ to cultivate disciples. We are here to cultivate, develop, and build disciples of Christ. And I think understanding God's generosity um, is a an anchoring principle because he has gifted us with so much to utilize and to leverage, not for our glory, but for God's glory. And so I am overjoyed by the count tonight and the presence of, of so many who are on this call. I only wish the whole church was on the call. So I want to encourage you to encourage others to come and grow with us as we seek to grow in the word of God. Um, out in there, and I'm excited about um, I'm excited about Sunday, excited mm -hmm. about all God is doing. Got a nice little report for y'all on Sunday. I'm gonna hold my mule until Sunday. <laughs> uh, let's just let's just say that God is at work in our community and um it's just mind blowing. And so with that. I'm going to pray and let you get back to your evening. Pastor. Three minutes till. Yes. Um, you asked me to put the message about housing in the chat. It's there. Beautiful. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. So, so for, for those, yeah, for those who joined after we got started, there's there's opportunities for um housing support. Um, the information is in the chat. You know, check it out and yep. reach out if you need more information. Yeah, let's be a vehicle of information. If you know mm -hmm. somebody looking for housing, subsidized housing, um, legitimate housing, the information is there in the chat. Feel free to copy, paste um, accordingly. And I believe this recording will be sent out to everyone so you'll have access to that. Yes. As Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come to thee with hearts that are overflowing with your love and brimming with the recognition that thou art God of all things. We are humbled to know that your peace, your joy, your hope, and your Christ is with us. Thank you for the generosity that you continue to show. Thank you for your faithfulness and your consistency. You are there when we are awake. You are there when we awake in the morning. You are there throughout the day, and you are here even now on this call. I pray that this call, this Bible study would be like a fertile seed sown in the fertile uh, nest of our hearts, that what was shared tonight in spirit and in thought would take residence in the residue of our soil and be watered by your spirit to grow and flourish so that all of society can see the fruit of that which we are anchored in. Thank you for salvation. Thank you 
for the gift of Christ. Thank you for an opportunity to say thank you with the lips that you gave us and the hearts that you've delivered for us to believe you with. We ask of God as we uh, transition from this call to the next thing, wherever we may be, God, that we would do so knowing that thou art with us, that your rod and staff are still comforting, and that great is your mercy unto all of us. These and other blessings we ask in the mighty and unmatched name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, family. Amen. Hit on the dot. Be good. Amen. Good night, everyone. Bless you, everybody. Have a good, good night, evening. Everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> How long has this uncle just holding a key? Amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm standing per usual. Yes, oh, my gosh. she always raising the bar. Even I'm high. telling you, great job, sis. You oh, took it to a whole level. Level. I praise God. <laughs> you will Brother, always so be our nice opener. Being. You will always be our opener. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I I just praise God because I tell you. <laughs> he just kept pouring in and pouring in and pouring in and I just couldn't get it all. I couldn't get it all. <laughs> but God is good. Thank you all for such kind, kind comments. Thank you. You are you definitely are quarterback. Appreciate Amen. you. <laughs> quarterback, running back, left tackle. Oh, <laughs> left tackle. Hunter. <laughs> Middle line, back of safety. Don't she talk. Goes, don't talk. Rev Wilkins. Rev Wilkins. I, I can she's do Detroit for you. Lions. That's she right. Was... Clearly. <laughs> Detroit Lions this week. Always. Oh, oh, that, that's what she's doing. <laughs> the whole team. That the whole shebang. Amazing. Bang. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. amazing. I tell God. you, on Monday, that flow was just so mm -hmm. perfect. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's all I can uh, say. Spot on. <laughs> and Pastor <laughs> liked your, your, your belief. Um, slide loved it mm -hmm. oh oh the the abbreviated i hope nobody got offended by me abbreviating those all no. those sentences no. <laughs> no no it was beautiful it was perfect all of it was i have no critiques I, I just wish there were even more people on to hear and experience it but i thought for a first night to have roughly 65 people on at any point was just wonderful and so wonderful yeah Wonderful job. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did we did we plan to talk about the prodigal son? Yeah, it was on your outline. Woo! But you know, um it's, it's on the outline. I'm preaching about Sunday. I said, Lord. That's that subconscious though. That's subconscious kicked in. I'm like, Amen. I'm excited. That's great.